back in 1985, the band Latin Quarter had a hit single um, called Radio Africa, and the, the song started off by saying, I'm hearing only bad news on Radio Africa. I'm only hearing sad news on Radio Africa. And that is unfortunately um, the image that a lot of people have about Africa. It is a place of bad news. It is a place of war. It is a place of famine. It's not very difficult to go onto Google and type, you just type in Africa, and the pictures that come up are not pictures of anything happy. There are pictures of war, of famine, and all of this sort of thing. Google also comes up with this though, very quickly as well, as it says that, um, well, everybody feels sorry for Africa, so everybody wants to rush to our aid. They want to give us aid um, in the form of peacekeeping, and, us, and uh, explicitly put the question mark after the peacekeeping, because is it really peacekeeping? Of course, everybody uh, wants to come and, um, and give uh, what they feel is humanitarian aid to Africa. Um, and often that doesn't actually, is not that really humanitarian either. If you look at these images, does that look like humanity to you? It looks really to me like people who are, are, are in, a, in, a, in a sort of a, a wheel of, of, of oppression. And then really, what really is, is, is important, I think, as well, is, is you know, what is people's intention with this aid? Are they doing this for personal reasons? And of course, we know that Africa's resources are, are very important to all sorts of other people out there. So there's always a, there's always a, a hidden agenda when it, well, not so hidden agenda sometimes when it comes to this aid. It, and uh, it's sort of, it, it's the, the, the do-gooders who are perhaps not doing us any good at all. And so this has led to this bad news um, uh, image that Africa unfortunately has. And it's internal and external. And I feel in a way that actually our internal uh, feeling about bad news is worse than the external one. But we've got ourselves into a situation, I think, in, the, in, in Africa where we're seen as a place that is putting out its hand the whole time for handouts. And we're, we're also, the, 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 we've become completely Afro-pessimistic. And again, I worry more about the, the African Afro-pessimism than the rest of the world Afro-pessimism when it comes down to this. We've also got this within, the, within, within Africa, and within South Africa in particular, um, a, a, a sense of self-entitlement that, you know, give me rather than I can give. And, you know, I, I, I think when Tyron said earlier this, no, no, today, you know, uh, when you ask us questions afterwards, <laughs> ask us what you can do for us rather than what we can do for you, I think is, is part of that. But this is, this is self-perpetuating. This, this, this cycle we've got ourselves into tends to be self-perpetuating and is, is, is uh, just um, you know, perpetuates this negative image of Africa. So here's an image of Africa which is very different and perhaps not as publicly um, accepted and seen as it should be, that there are very positive things happening in Africa. And what I've shown in this image here are things that um, hopefully most of you do know about, but just to, no, to, to emphasize them. The biggest gamma ray telescope in the world is in Namibia. The biggest, optical radio, uh, the op biggest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, one of the biggest in the world, is the SALT telescope um, near Sutherland, which is probably covered in snow this morning. Um, the newest radio telescope in the world is CAT7, is out in the Kourou. The biggest radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere is being built in the Kourou, called Meerkat. And the biggest scientific instrument in the world and the biggest radio telescope in the world is going to be built in Africa. This is a positive side to Africa, which I really feel that, no, we, that needs to be no, pushed very, uh, very strongly in our, in our media and in our psyche as well. Now, how did we end up like this? Though in this continent, which is known for war, known for famine, known for uh, 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 outside intervention in, in, no, under, under the guise of aid, how do we end up in a situation where we're taking the forefront in, in, in a certain science? Back in 1996, only two years after democracy, the government wrote a white paper on science and technology. And in that white paper, it said that South Africa and Africa should pursue fundamental science, as well as the applied sciences. Obviously, we wanted to get into the sciences we're going to help get us out of the cycle of poverty, out of um, get, the, uh, getting us away from the dread diseases you know, that, uh, that we face in, you know, in, in Africa. It said that we had to also pursue fundamental science. For not to do that, would, put, would end up with us being in this in, uh, uh, eternal cycle of trying to feed and clothe ourselves and not getting beyond that. It was taking a negative view on Africa. Also, that science should become part of the culture of Africa as well. It wasn't just a, a, a good thing to, to be a consumer of technology and a con consumer of science in Africa. We actually had to include um, uh, that, that, that culture in, or include science in our culture as well. 
So that's where this, where this all started back in 1996, shortly after the no, democracy, when, when the country had huge problems to deal with. But already then, the government was saying, the South African government was saying, we've got to pursue, um, we've got to pursue fundamental science. So you should all know now that you know, South Africa, together with Australia, have been awarded the Square Kilometre Array, the largest radio telescope that will ever be built in the world, the largest scientific instrument that will probably ever be built in the world as well. It's going to cost billions of dollars and billions of euros and those sorts of things, and it'll be built here, a, a large fraction of it will be built here in Africa. And it'll be looking at really fundamental things, fundamental science, the absolute blue sky, uh, blue sci blue sky science. We're looking at the cosmic or origins. Where did the universe come from? Um, how, did, has, how has the universe evolved? Um, where did cosmic magnetism come from? Was Einstein right? All of these very sort of high-level scientific things, that's what's driving the SKA. But hopefully I'll show you that that's actually had some very practical issues, uh, well, had some very pr practical, um, um, yeah, it's had some pr practical things in Africa as well. We'll see how that's come about. So the SKA is going to be in Africa. It's going to be spread out all over Africa. It's going to be um, concentrated here in the south, but it'll spread out across all sorts of other countries as well. And so we've had to engage not only in South Africa, we've had to engage with our African partners as well. And this is a statement that came from the African Union. Now, this is where I sort of start, you start to see the influence of a project like this. The African Union normally sits and talks about wars. It talks about famine. It talks about all of these things. But it also, a couple of years ago, at its summit, oops, wrong button. Um, we go back. Oh. Sorry. It said here, that it endorses the African bid to host the SKA on the African continent. And um, it says here, basically, that Africa should become a center for world-class research. So the African Union, which is not known for expounding on science very often, gave us the full support to this project, which I think is a very positive thing. It's an influence of science on the politicians, that they actually start thinking out of the box. They don't, not thinking about bread and butter issues all of the time. We've won the SKA. Here it is in South Africa. And as I said here, Minister Pandor is cutting up the African continent in a way that our colonial masters never imagined with a big knife. And this is what it's going to look like. We're going to have these massive, this, these massive antennas uh, spread out all over Africa, which is fantastic. I mean, this is a really, I mean, compare these images to the images I showed right at the beginning. This is the Africa that we aspire to. We're building Meerkat here in South Africa. So the, 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 the white paper said we should get involved in fundamental science. That was operationalized through the Department of Arts, Culture, and Science and Technology in the old days, and then onto the Department of Science and Technology more recently. They said, what we want to do, our vision, is to host the biggest radio telescope in the world. That's the SKA. We've won that. And also said that Africa should build its own radio telescope, which is called the Meerkat. Here it is. And as, a, as a, a late colleague of mine once said, build it and they will come. We've built CAT7 out in the Karoo. It's a small little radio telescope, but it's quite uh, versatile, and, and a lot of people are, are wanting to use it. And we literally, we built this, and hundreds of people have, come, have, have said that they want to use this instrument, not uh, Africans, but also, importantly, people from outside Africa. This shows uh, 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 the distribution of people who are going to be using Meerkat, the people who've actually signed up uh, for, for the first five years of Meerkat. There are 316 individuals from 121 institutions from 22 countries around the world. People from the rest of the world are coming to Africa to do their science. In the past, it was a case of everybody was trying to get an air ticket out of Africa to go somewhere else. Now everybody's trying to come to Africa to come and do science here in Africa on an African-built instrument. There are other aspects as well about this. The, the, the South Africa's history is steeped in war. And pre-94, of course, there was no, the, uh, we know that we... We were fighting unjust wars um, in, in the subcontinent. Post-94, we continued with this because we had a big arms industry and we wanted to try and keep it going because we thought this was a way to drive the economy. And, but you know, hopefully, in Africa in particular, conflict is reducing. This market is a shrinking market. And so the Roy Falk helicopter was a commercial failure. The, even the guns and things that we, we try and peddle these days are not so, you know, not so popular anymore. So this is not the way to drive your economy and your technology through the traditional way of, of, of uh, or high-tech uh, um, stuff through, through the military. What you want to do instead is to say, well, those high-tech things that we were doing in the military are generic in their application. There are other more benign ways of, of, de of developing high-tech. So within the, the SKA project in South Africa, within the Meerkat project, we're working on very high-speed digital electronics. The people who are working, the young engineers who are working on this, and some of the not-so-young engineers who are working on this, 
this high-speed digital processing that we're doing came from the military industry. They would have other, because of the decline of the military industry, they would have left South Africa or would have just gone into, you know, in, into a vegetative state and not actually done anything particularly useful. But what, we, what, what astronomy has given them is a way of actually getting, staying in the high-tech domain. And this board that we've built, built, called, built, uh, built called the Roach Board is now exported from Africa, uh, Africa and from South Africa into the rest of the world. So what we have is a, a, an indigenous African technology now, high technology, being distributed into the rest of the world. And that's come about because we've, 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 we've pursued a fundamental science. We've pursued astronomy, but it's driven a high-tech industry. So it's not just the blue sky science that you get out of this. In the project as well, we've inspired people. A big project like this, a big iconic project like this, inspires people to get involved. And we're driving now in, through a human capital development program. We have programs all the way from research chairs and professors at universities, all the way down to, to, to artisans on the ground level. It's, it, we have a whole pyramid of support that we need. We need people with a wide range of those skills, and we're driving a whole lot of initiatives like that through the country, and allowing people to, to, to get skills which would allow them to do uh, a, a, a decent day's work and get a decent salary out of that. So again, just astronomy, blue skies, science, but it's actually driving education and all the way down to the artisan level um, in, in the country. Another thing that's happened is, is uh, in, in Europe, uh, I know Europe's got its own problems at the moment, but the European Parliament still found time in, in their difficult times now as, as the Eurozone was, was going into meltdown to put together a written declaration basically saying that Europe wanted to work with South Africa and Africa on radio astronomy. And so this is not Band-Aid, as I say, it's, it's, it's science aid. They actually want to work with us. So you've actually got the European Parliament saying, uh, no, South Africa and Africa has become an important destination for science, for, for our scientists. I want to finish off with a couple of thoughts, and, the, and that no, really Africa is poised at the moment to become a leader in science and technology. It just takes the, the, uh, the, 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 the courage and the boldness to be able to do that. And to really finish off with some words from, from George Meilier, uh, uh, a, a very um, prominent radio astronomer in, in the Netherlands, who says these rather provocative things in a way that you know, the telescopes today may replace the cathedrals of the past. And that astronomy, uh, well, he says that the three signatures of an advanced country are technology, science, and culture. And astronomy needs and feeds all of these. So I hope that uh, you uh, you know, um, have uh, I've convinced you that the pursuit of fundamental science, which you know, at face value may not seem to have value, actually does have great value in all sorts of ways for us. Thank you very much.